All right, what's happening, everybody? Here to give you an update on the progress of the Citizen Cycle Bike, right? If you don't know, you haven't been following this project, I'm trying to build an all-wheel drive e-bike. I've built one in the past, but I'm doing a little bit different this time. And this has uh, been my project bike. This is my 2018 Rad Rover, and just been slowly making it into a complete beast, right? And I started by updating the controller to a 35 amp controller, made it really powerful. Then I put another motor on the front wheel, a direct drive motor, which was a kit from eBikeLink. And it worked really well, actually. I was a little bit shocked at how well that bike worked. And then I dismantled it. <laughs> and I've been trying to put on a geared hub motor in the front wheel, which is a lot more powerful than that direct drive motor. And I think it looks better as well. We had a catastrophic accident last last time this build was done i did a video on that if you haven't seen it check it out but i basically broke the motor clean out of the dropouts and the bike's been down ever since but i got a new set of forks thank you to fabulous e-bikes for sending me a new set of the forks that they use on their all-wheel drive bike they use these rst guide forks on their road warrior bike which is a Kind of like what I'm trying to build here. It's a dual motorbike, 750 watt gear hub motors in each wheel. That's kind of what I'm going for on the Citizen Bike 3.0. Hopefully these uh, forks will be able to contain the power. I have some, I have faith that it's gonna work this time. I have another fabulous all wheel drive bike hanging on the wall right there, the EMX Extreme Bike. Same forks, the RST Guide forks is what they use on that. And I've been kind of looking at that as I'm putting this one together they sent me a kit of washers and stuff. And if, and just in case you guys see this video and you're trying to do something similar or you're just interested, I'm gonna show you how I'm trying to set up all the washers and everything to hold this front wheel in place because I'm running into some challenges. Maybe you guys can even help me out with some suggestions as well because it doesn't seem to be fitting quite the way that I want it to. So let me show you. All right, so here's what we got going on. When Fabulous sent me these forks, they also sent me a, a kit full of you know washers and torque washers and the nuts to hold everything on there. And as I'm putting it together, I'm just having a hard time getting things to fit the way I think they should, or I, I don't know. So here's how it stands right now. I've got this side of the dropout kind of down in there. And you can see that torque washer, the tab piece doesn't go down into the dropout. It's kind of angled incorrectly so it's not gonna do its job and keep the axle from spinning so i'm not sure what to do if i should just bend that tab down further i don't want to ruin the structural integrity of that torque washer though and yeah i wasn't sure to put it if you try to put it on the outside it's the same look and this is pretty much all the way down in the dropout so that's all the further down that's going to go in there so that's just not going to work and I was taking a look at the other bike, the Emax Extreme, and how they have their setup, and it's a different type of washer on there. It's not these same washers. And I happen to have an extra set of torque washers. I don't know, I can't remember where I got them, but they look like this, and they're a different style. See how it's kind of a 90 degree angle there? And if you put this one on, slide on there, it slides right down in the dropout perfectly. That's what it's supposed to look like. I happen to have two of these extra torque washers that I'm gonna use on this bike because I think that's how it should fit. If you don't have these, <laughs> I don't know what you would do. And I don't know where to get it. I've been looking for somewhere to buy these little torque washers. I guess that's what they're called, I don't know. And I can't find them anywhere. Um, these, these ones like this, these fit perfectly on this fork and this wheel. I guess it's good that I had two extra ones I'm gonna use these on there. The other tabbed ones I don't think are gonna work. So I'm gonna go with uh, probably a washer on the inside and then the dropout and then this torque washer. And then after that, the nut that holds everything together. I don't know if I'm gonna do torque arms. You know, the other EMX bike I've got right there, you know, there's no torque arms on that. The only thing holding that front motor, that geared hub motor in place on that bike is these little torque washers like this. So uh, same thing on this side, you know, it doesn't really, fit down in there this this side's not all the way down in the dropout but if you guys have suggestions on where to buy these extra torque washers i really want some more of these i don't know where to get them even when i ordered like the torque arm kit from amazon it didn't come with any of those washers but that's where we stand i'm gonna take this wheel back off take these larger tabbed washers out 
just put I think a, a flat washer in between the fork and the wheel just enough to get my disc brake spacing correctly and then we'll put the tab washers on the outside and then the nut and then call it a day and see <laughs> if it works I hope so these are the destroyed forks over here just broke the you know the dropouts completely off of this cheap air fork from Amazon don't anybody buy this air fork it I mean it didn't last 10 minutes I destroyed it and I'm second guessing the air fork I put on the other bike too the be cool because I've been riding it around and I just don't trust it <laughs> after this one blew up on me so that's where we stand with the citizen bike I'm going to put this wheel back on and then I want to show you one other thing about these forks all right we got this wheel on there I don't know guys what do you think is that going to be enough is that going to be enough I don't have torque arms to put on this thing because my torque arms got destroyed when I blew up the front end is that going to be enough to hold this wheel on <laughs> I wish I had more of those washers. Somebody tell me where to get those washers. All right, we brought her out into the sunlight here so you can see things a little better and a couple things I want to talk about. But the other thing about the fork I wanted to show you was just basically this part right here. On the RST guide forks, it's just so much thicker and beefier than on the, you know, the air forks that I blew out. It's shaped differently. It's thicker. It's just more robust of a dropout. It's really hard to get a camera shot of it, but... It's, um, I have a lot more faith in these other forks from RST Guide than I do these, these air forks. They were they didn't last 10 minutes, man. They just got totally blown out. And I don't know what material this is in here. You guys can see, but it was not strong at all. So these forks are pretty much junk. Uh, well, I mean, I will say I was using them for a purpose they were not intended for. So maybe it's not the fork's fault, it's mine. But anyway, those forks don't hold a geared hub motor that's for sure all right so the other things i wanted to go over on the bike were just a little bit of a backstory for you so you know how this build's been progressing and that is you know once i decided i want to get the hub motor in the front wheel i had the brilliant idea of i'll just go buy a whole new rear motor setup right and then i'll take my existing rear wheel i'll take out the guts of this motor and that'll leave me with a wheel and a buffet casing and I can just swap a new motor into that casing that has the right dropout width because the dropout's like the axle width, right? So that's what I did. I went out and bought the 135 millimeter motor and I was just gonna swap it into this wheel and case. But the problem with that is how the disc brake lines up. There's a little spacer on the motor casing and it wasn't gonna work. It just, it just wasn't gonna work. So I had to ditch that idea and ultimately I just had to get the motor laced in by a bike shop took my original rad wheel and had them lace the motor in. That was really my only option to get it to fit correctly. That was problem number one that I kind of had to overcome. The next problem that I didn't foresee coming was my plan was to have the back wheel, which had, you know, motor, controller, battery. That was the bolt and upgrade kit basically running that back wheel. And I was like, okay, I'll just mimic that and I'll do everything on the front. I'll have a separate motor, battery, and controller and screen and everything right and it'll be i'll just run the same type of system on the front wheel well, what i forgot to think about was the 35 controller upgrade you know that plugs into the rad wiring harness and i only had one rad wiring harness so i can't plug multiple systems into one wiring harness so to solve that i actually contacted rad and i had them send me an additional rad wiring harness. When I say that, I just mean the wire that goes through the down tube here uh, from the controller up to all the controls up here in the screen. I needed that wire because everything was already plugged into it for the back wheel. So I couldn't plug the front wheel into anything. I, I didn't have that wire. So I had them send me another one. So now I have two separate wiring harnesses running the two independent systems. So I didn't think about that. Um, if you're going to try to do this, think about that. You're going to need a, that other wire from Rad. It wasn't that much money. It was I don't know, 25, 30 bucks or something. And they sent it out right away. Rad's cool. Rad has given me all kinds of extra stuff. I ordered, uh, you know, additional headlights because I'm running dual headlights now on the bike. So those are from Rad and customer service has been great from them. So I know some of you think I don't like Rad. I do like Rad. I have like four of their bikes. But the benefits of the whole extra wiring harness thing is now I can have, I have two headlights running on the bike and they are each plugged into a separate wiring harness. So each headlight runs off the bike and just you know the front headlight runs off the front system the back headlight runs off the back system so i have two functioning headlights 
that are powered by the bike. Same with the taillights. I can have two taillights if I want. I just haven't decided if I want to wire up two have dual taillights or not. Maybe. I just I, I couldn't find a spot that, where they look good. I'm still we're still researching that. Hopefully you find this stuff interesting. <laughs> I'm loving it, man. Just trying to figure this out and sort this out and solve the problems as they arise. And I'm gonna make this thing. Somebody asked me before, like, are you sorry you took apart the version that was working with the hub motor in the front? I'm not, actually. I, um, this is a very interesting project for me. And I think it looks better, honestly, with the smaller motor up in the front. And we've decreased weight because I got some other things going on. I won't tell you about that just yet. I'll show you the, the finished product when I'm com finally completely done with this thing. But that's where it stands as of right now. Thank you again to Fabulous for the front forks for this bike. And I, well, we're going to see if it works. We're going to see if it works out. All right, and I think again. that's all for today, guys. So if you like stuff like this, consider hitting subscribe. Thumbs up helps me out. And I will hopefully be back very soon with a functioning Citizen 3.0 bike and tell you all about the little things I did to this bike, which I think make it better than a store-bought all-wheel drive bike. I've got some things that you're probably not thinking about that make this bike different. So once I get it back up and running and in action, we'll show you the finished product. Thanks for watching.